Hello, and welcome to the Mr. 50mm YouTube channel. I'm Mr. 50mm. You can call me Chris. The scenario is as follows. You're browsing your favorite photography forum or gallery on Flickr, and uh, either way, you're on the World Wide Web of Webs. You notice some photos. They look otherworldly. It intrigues you. You click on the uh, picture, and you're struck by an amount of awe, a pretty substantial amount somewhere between 50 and 80% levels of awe. And you wonder, how did they do this? Was it magic? Was it AI magic? Or was it regular Photoshop? You're not sure. So you investigate the description of the photo, and that's when you see it. They have a camera converted for infrared or full spectrum photography. And your heart sinks a bit as you think, dang, I need to get an expensive specialized camera to do that kind of stuff. Fear not, though. Today, I'm going to go over with you how you can potentially make yourself a reasonably priced infrared or full spectrum camera. Although I do want to say this isn't really a full on tutorial, it's more informational. And uh, we're going to be using uh, information from a website called lifepixel.com. Uh, they're, they're a super awesome site. They actually offer services to like convert cameras to infrared, but they also offer DIY instructions for how to tear down your camera to do the conversion yourself. And that's actually what we're going to be using this site for. Again, awesome resource. I'm going to post a, a link to the, the description for them below. And should you choose to uh, go that route, they seem like they use uh, or they produce pretty excellent cameras. Uh, otherwise, stick with me and we're going to go over how to uh, make yourself a pretty affordable infrared full spectrum camera. All right, before we embark on our journey any further, I do want to state the standard disclaimer. I'm not responsible for any tomfoolery that results from this video. So there are risks from doing this, both to yourself and to the camera. So if you're not confident in your ability to disassemble and reassemble uh, things, this may not be a good idea for you. Moving on. so. The point of this video that I'm trying to make is that we're going to go over tips for how to make an infrared or full spectrum camera on the cheap. I do want to state right out the gate, I have done this on my own Panasonic G1. I got a red one. So these can be had for really cheap. Now if you're probably looking for one, you could probably look, for, look and get one for like I don't know, 60 USD or something. I actually ended up getting mine some time ago for like literally $40 Canadian. And that came with a perfectly serviceable battery, the charger, camera body, no lens, of course. Uh, so basically, I got this camera, and given how cheap it was, I tossed caution to the wind and I embarked on this adventure. So it is at this point that before we go into the deep dive of uh, what's going on, I will go over the asterisks in the video title and the rationale for what we're going to be doing. So we'll go over these points in detail. All right, the asterisks. Asterisk number one. This mod is going to break your autofocus. Infinity focus on your micro four thirds lenses will no longer work after this mod. And I, at this point, like for my camera, I did not care that uh, I was going to lose that. So if this matters to you, this may not be the mod for you. Asterisk number two. This mod does require a little bit of ingenuity and at least access to a 3D printer. Now, you can get away without the ingenuity. You can have some of mine, but you will need to, uh, some sort of fabrication method for some parts. Asterisk number three. You will need to modify... Uh, lens mounts, basically lens mount adapters. I recommend the uh, M42 uh, standard and we'll modify that so that you can get back infinity focus. Asterisk number four. This one's kind of optional, but if it, it kind of goes without stating that uh, if you do intend to shoot infrared and you only want to shoot infrared, you're going to need to buy and buy a uh, infrared pass filter. I've seen these on Amazon for like 20 bucks. I don't know what the quality is like, but for 20 bucks, it's worth a shot. So if you can accept these asterisks, keep watching and follow along if you wish. So why the Panasonic G1? 
Let's have a look at mine. Right. So I think this is actually a prime candidate for a conversion like this. And there's a couple of really good points I want to go over. One, it's relatively modern in that it's a camera from 2009. It's mirrorless, therefore it has full-time live view. And this has a built-in EVF, which is a plus, at least for me. I really like them compared to just staring at the back of a screen. Uh, and it's something that I find very helpful shooting IR. Now, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of modern uh, mirrorless cameras. However, it has enough so that shooting infrared doesn't become a pain. And you don't need to refer to the infrared markings on the lens to properly focus this thing. You simply shoot through the finder, focus as you would normally do it, as the camera sees, and off you go. Now, another factor that came into the uh, equation was the construction of the Panasonic G1. Uh, it's something I kind of took into account looking at cameras to potentially do this to. Uh, and basically, it came down to disassembling the Panasonic G1 actually isn't super difficult. Uh, there are a lot of screws. There are a lot of flat flex connectors, but if you've ever, ever worked on like a modern phone, like an iPhone or something similar, this this is actually kind of a walk in the park. There's a lot more space inside the camera, and uh, well, I won't say it's super easy compared to like cracking open a modern iPhone. I think it's it's quite a walk in the park. Uh, small tangent though, does anyone ever feel like when you do open up a modern phone, it just feels like the manufacturer does not want anyone in there at all. Like they use obscenely tiny screws and each one is like a different length. So that like, if you mess it up, the wrong part goes in the wrong spot. Uh, and then like the adhesive strips they use for some reason have crazy gripping power to the part they hold down. But the minute that you try to pull the strip out, it just, just rips. Anyways, the G1 doesn't feel aggressively like it's fighting against being opened up. That's the, that's really the point I'm, I'm trying to make. Additionally, another awesome point about the uh, G1 is the cost. For whatever reason, these cameras are like brutally cheap. Recently, prices have uh, gone up a little bit, but still, I think they're a very manageable price. Again, I got mine for 40 northern dollars. Uh, at one point, I even got a Panasonic G1H for free because like the owner just didn't want it. They, they're moving and they didn't, they didn't want to pack it up. Uh, so yeah, like for some reason, these, uh, first gen Panasonic cameras are uh, fairly affordable. And another pro tip, if you're looking for a rock bottom price for your G1 to convert, have a look at one, uh, it's hard to see, but online, there are a bunch of like, let's see if I can get it to reflect there. There are signs that the, like rubberized coating on this that used to be on there were like coming apart uh so look at g1s or g1hs that suffer from like the devulcanizing grips uh, they're like really sticky and a bit nasty and generally they sell quite a bit cheap just because holding on to a sticky camera feels not great uh, and you can do what i did and rectify this by grabbing cotton swabs, isoprop alcohol, sitting down and just rubbing the material off with I IPA. It takes a while, but like it saves you some money if you're trying to get it for the absolute rock bottom dollar. Now, lastly, another reason to go for generally like a micro four thirds camera is that adapting lenses, pretty easy. Uh, the flange distance is super close on micro four, four thirds. So you can adapt any lens you want uh, and in this specific case, we're going to need to custom do a lens adapter to restore infinity focus, which I'll explain later on. Anyways, uh, with this guide though, you could generally apply this logic to any other micro four third camera or mirrorless camera and just follow the guide on like the life pixel website to do it. Uh, but I personally have the cheapest method that leaves you with a pretty modern shooting experience is Panasonic G1 or G1H, uh, and that's what I'll be recommending for this video. All right, so let's dive into asterisk number one. So if you've read the guides before or generally know the process, basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna take apart the camera right down to the sensor, and right where you get to the part where you remove 
the like dust shake system and uh, you expose the camera's hot mirror normally uh, this mirror is used to you know stop IR from hitting the sensor and therefore pleading in your photos now it's important because if you don't have one of these uh, for regular photography you're gonna get like really weird color rendition but in our case you're gonna want to pop that hot mirror out normally what you do is replace the hot mirror with like another mirror to either accommodate the spectrum you want to shoot or if you want to like just straight up full spectrum a clear piece of uh, glass now what we're gonna do is take the hot mirror out and replace it with nothing now at that point you're basically gonna you know go back on the instructions and reassemble as if you had replaced the hot mirror and this is actually what's gonna break your uh, autofocus infinity focus so uh, what happens is that the, the hot mirror there, it actually does end up affecting your effective flange distance. It is a piece of glass the light's going through before hitting the sensor. So by not having anything in the way, uh, it's going to just affect the, uh, I guess, your effective flange distance. Uh, so in this way, you lose the ability to focus to infinity. Now, we are going to address that later on, but that that is asterisk number one all right um, now before we move on i actually wanted to show you the uh, the mirror that you you will be extracting from the g1 just to make it clear like this oh let's see if it'll focus this is it yeah now if you notice that is not an insubstantial amount of glass interrupting your optical path filtering out your eyes of the eyes so yeah by removing that things will change and we will need to accommodate for that asterisks two and three aside from like the equipment uh in the guides that the you're going to need to have you will need a 3D printer, or at least access to a 3D printer, and some manual focus class. Now again, I can hear the questions through the screen. You're gonna ask, how is this cheaper than just buying the infrared filter from this website? Well, the infrared filter for Micro Four Thirds that they're selling and uh, that appear to come up in some other sites tends to place the filter at about 100 USD. That is, you know, verifiably more than 40 Canadian dollars. Uh, it's kind of for this logic that I decided just to keep going without it. Since like I have a fairly substantial library of M42 lenses and generally am more than willing to experiment. On the plus side or on another note, like M42 lenses, uh, they're very abundant and a lot of them can be had for very cheap. I actually ended up picking up uh, Sears 50mm 1.4 for $20 US when I was in America land. Now, that being said, if you're okay losing infinity focus at this point, like you can toss on any old uh, Micro Four Thirds lens adapter and can continue along and just take photos knowing that you can no longer focus there. So if you're okay with doing like close up or just not infinity photography, you're kind of good to go right now. Uh, that being said, I do want to continue and we'll talk about how to restore your infinity focus. All right. So in order to restore infinity focus, we have to modify a adapter. And then again, in this case, I'm modifying a M42 to a micro four thirds adapter. The original model that I got was actually from a user named, uh, Nikolaus714 on Thingiverse. I'll post a link to the original model down below. And I will post my modified version so that if you do proceed to use this uh, video as a guide, you can have the model that worked for me. Now, what I did was I took this person's model and I ended up uh, basically doing some draw and error and uh, lowering the uh, effective distances from the sensor to the amp mount. And I found that roughly dropping 1.5 millimeters was enough to accommodate the change caused by removing the hot mirror. Now, again, if you're going to do this on your own, trial and error may be required as, you know, a lot of things kind of affect the print. So the number 
like 1.5 for me on my printer might be a little bit different for you, but generally I found 1.5 to be a good number, solid, solid spot where I could uh, effectively focus again to infinity with a little bit of play. Now, again, if you want to do it with the uh, M42, uh, my link will be down below for you to, to print. Uh, the print is not super big. It's roughly two to three hours and I think about 50 grams of material based on settings. I tend to make my print solid because I don't want the print breaking or having light leaks. So like I put like a lot of walls and a lot of infill, but in the end of the day, you know, it's about a dollar or two dollars worth of material and whatever the cost of running the printer is. Uh, if you don't, again, if you don't have a 3D printer, you need to access one to do this. Uh, where I am in Halifax, the local universities will accept uh, files to print from the public and makerspaces will usually do this as well. But also, you could just hire a uh, print house, send your print there and get them to mail you the print once it's done. Asterix number four. Right, so now you have your camera, your adapted uh, lens adapter, for infinity focus, and presumably you got your lens. Now, if you wanna shoot full spectrum, at this point, Asterix 4, it's kind of optional. You're you're done. You can start taking photos, get the wonky colors right now. Uh, but if you want to shoot just infrared, you will need to buy an infrared pass filter. Again, I found one on Amazon, it was pretty cheap, and you just need to get it for whatever filter thread sizes the lens that you happen to have. Uh, and then screw that lens uh, filter on and shoot to your heart's content. Again, I'll post a link to the one I found online because I'm probably going to be buying another one because I have some other lenses I want to try shooting a thread on with the G1. 50 mil is kind of a bit tight. I've got a 28 Fujinon as well, which the filter works on, but I do have some other 28s that I do want to try it on, so I'll be buying, I'll be buying another filter. The results. So if you already did the conversion, and you're looking at your photos, and you're looking at my photos, you might go, huh, something went weird with my camera. But don't, don't think that. No. Uh, the truth is, IR photos, or IR photography, taking the photo is half the battle. The other half is the editing. Editing these photos is kind of weird. Uh, I'll post a link to a video that I found pretty useful for how to walk through editing the photos as well as a link to a photography blog that I think explained it pretty well. Anyways, so looking at the photos that the G1 produces, you can see that the uh, IRness is pretty IRE. Uh, however, you probably will notice that in a lot of my photos, the sky color is uh, fairly noisy. Um, I'm just going to assume that's due to the channel mixing and like the way that I'm editing, kind of boosting up the sky a bit. Uh, and like these are all taken out like ISO 200 on the camera, but I think when I am kind of pushing the sliders for the specific blue channel, I think I'm probably pushing quite a few stops up, uh, just which is probably you know causing that noise in some of the photos. In other ones, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, so I think yeah, more than the camera is just more of the way that I'm editing it. Uh, and for this last photo. It's actually a full-spectrum photo. Uh, for that, uh, I didn't actually look up how to edit these. I kind of just went forward using a mixture of editing the IR photo and you know, normal editing. And I think it looks pretty funky. Uh, but more uh, importantly to that, the IR photo, I think, actually looks like the cleanest file. And that kind of makes sense. It's, it's you know getting light from all the spectrum. Anyways. Let me know what you think of uh, the photos and let me know what you think of the uh, full spectrum photo. And if you have any like editing tips or whatnot, send them my way because I, I probably could use the help. So if you can live with the asterisks that I've uh, discussed, you'll have a reasonably capable IR or a full spectrum shooter. And I think all said and done, like a conservative uh, amount of money you're spending probably under $150. Uh, and I think, again, I think if you like hunt around for a G1, I've seen some go for like 
70, 60 USD that are in rough shape but working. Like, all in all, I think that an M42 lens and a filter, like $100 USD is not an unreasonable goal if you're willing to wait around for the right price. That's honestly not bad, considering the cost of the um, custom cut hot mirror replacement is about 100 USD. You're getting an entire ass camera system for, for that cost. I know that uh, losing autofocus is probably not ideal for a lot of people. Uh, but again, for me, it didn't matter since I had a fairly chunky variety of M42 lenses. Will you consider doing this mod on your own? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time. Bye.